So we've got the 2019 K-League season set to begin, and we wanted to get perhaps a bit of an insider look at soccer in Korea, what to expect this year. And to help us do that, we have Ryan Walters here in the studio. Ryan is the founder and editor-in-chief of K-League United. This is a website dedicated to providing English language news, analysis, interviews, and more from the world of Korean football. Ryan Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, obviously, uh, you have some affinity with football, I imagine, because you are in charge of this major publication. But K-League itself, how did you first get involved? Well, uh, I was really lucky when I moved back to Korea. I moved here the first time in 2013. I moved back in 2015. And I was 10 minutes away from the Jeonnam Dragons home stadium. Oh. So I went to a couple of games. I had been to a few before, uh, but I really fell in love with the league that year. And it was right in my backyard. It yeah. was affordable. And coming from the States where things are so expensive to, to get a ticket to bring in any food sure. or anything else like that, it was just a really great experience. And I was lucky enough to be right on the doorstep. You're American. I am. Um, I'm American. Uh, you, we, you and I both know very well that although it, it's sort of rising in popularity, mm-hmm. by no means is, is America a football country. Right? No. We, we have another football. Not which, yet. Uh, not yet. And, yeah. and so, but it's interesting. Have you always been a soccer fan growing up? Yeah. Uh, since about age five, I've been playing the game. Okay. And I was one of those kids that just kept liking it. Right, because everyone has the soccer moms, yep. and you do it yep. when you're like a young kid, but mm-hmm. by the time you get it to junior high, high school, you pretty much either move on to basketball, football, baseball, or whatever, right? Yeah, I played a little bit of American football as well, and then, uh, I'll just be honest, I didn't like two-a-day practices in the summer, right, right. so I switched over to soccer and started kind of analyzing the sport later in life I see. and just really fell in love with it, but it's been something that's been with me my whole life, and in Chicago when I moved there is when I really really got into it because there's a pro team there, the Chicago Fire. So. Right. Uh, let's talk about then your life here in Korea. Yeah. Uh, you had that uh, passion for soccer. Um, you were attending the Jeonnam Dragon Games. Yep. The process of getting K-League United started, what hmm. was sort of the inspiration behind that? And how'd, how'd you, what was the process in terms of actually launching? Yeah, so when I moved back in 2015 in researching Gwangyang, there wasn't much that came up other than the Jeonnam Dragons. So I wanted to to try to write about them and to try to do a little bit more with that. And in researching it, I saw a lot of people that had done some really great work. And then they left Korea and the work that they had done just kind of disappeared into the ether. Or there were a lot of people doing a lot of different things and no one was really collaborating. So the idea with it was that I would write about my local team and then I would find other people to write about their local team. Okay. So instead of a bunch of different people pulling in different directions, I wanted to try to get everybody pulling in one direction and kind of create a community mm. around football here. Uh, and I was lucky enough the first year, a couple of people signed up. I think there were five of us that first year. Everybody was on board. We met up a couple of times, and now it's just grown into something else I entirely. See. So it, it wasn't some kind of... In the beginning, I'm going to make a bazillion dollars oh, no, uh, no. aggregating all this football content here. And Mm-mm. it was just really out of a passion. And you got like-minded people together, and it, it's kind of grown into what it is now. Would you say it's pretty much a one-stop shop then for anybody who uh, has an interest in Korean football and needs to find uh, English language content on it? Yeah, we're certainly trying to be. Uh, we, we've tried to outline fan groups that people can join. We've tried to highlight the better aspects of K-League compared to other leagues. But more importantly, we're just trying to make sure that people that want more information have more information. Right. So we've done it in all, all ways that we can try with uh, written previews, podcasts, videos, all all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're trying to do it to get people as much information as they would want. There is some punditry involved with mm-hmm. anything like this. So, um, you know, in the sports world, right, we always talk about the hot takes and, oh, yeah. and all of that. Uh, as far as the K-League itself, now, you know, I've, I've been around a while and you've seen sort of the evolution of the K-League and the mm-hmm. kind of introduction of uh, more and more higher profile uh, foreign players into the mix, uh, as well as maybe the exodus of some of the more Korean, talented Korean mm-hmm. players going overseas. But a- as far as the competitiveness of the league, uh, I've I've often heard it compared to, let's say, second division English football, maybe a, a tier above perhaps even the MLS. Uh, the, the German-based International Federation of Football History and Statistics says it's the 19th strongest mm-hmm. or, I guess, competitive league that's up nine from 2018. What What is your general sense of the overall quality of play? Well, you can be diplomatic. You can be blunt. You can be... <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I have a bit of a personal bias. 
But I think if you, the only real measure that we have as far as the rest of Asia is the Champions League, and K League has the most Champion League titles by far. Right. They have twelve Japanese. Uh, the J League has seven. So as far as that goes. They're the best in Asia, but I think as far as just watching the game, as far as level of play, entertainment, the level of play, I think, doesn't get enough credit okay. for where it is. I think the technical skill level in this league is outstanding. Wow. And and we see that with a lot of the players that finally got to shine on the world stage sure. of the World Cup, right? right? You know, Daegu FC goalkeeper Cho Yanu, nobody knew who Came he was. Came out of nowhere. Came right? out of nowhere, but this is a guy that... We've been trying to talk about for years. He he won our goalkeeper of the year award for a couple of years, and so you he, weren't surprised at what he was able to do on the big stage. I was okay, <laughs> just because he's great. <laughs> but I didn't know he was beat Germany, start in all three right, World Cup right. games, kind of great, especially with a goalkeeper like Kim Sung Gyu ahead of him. That was a little surprising, but the fact that he was able to do it mm. talent wise mm. wasn't, and and the fact that we've seen players like Huang and Bum at just 22 years old, make a move to Vancouver Whitecaps and MLS. It's not surprising because these guys have a really high level of technical skill. Well, again, from the States, uh, Chicago Fire mm-hmm. fan. Uh, MLS, it, you know, you can maybe be cynical, say it's sort of in a retirement home for these aging EPL stars. You've mm-hmm. got Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard, even, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, back in the day, David Beckham. Uh, well, how would you compare the two leagues, uh, honestly? Well, it's an interesting comparison because both leagues came about around the same time and both have had a very different approach. I think MLS is, when talking about MLS with other MLS fans, we always talk about like different iterations, MLS 1.0, 2.0. It's a, it's a weird way to do it, but it has gone through different forms. And now it's in more of a, a selling league form where there are young South American players like mm-hmm. Miguel Amiron who just got sold to Newcastle United for $27 million or something like that. So instead of being the league that's only bringing in retired players. Now MLS has become a league where they're selling young talent. And that's where I would love to see K-League get to that point. I think right now there's a lot of talent in Southeast Asia, and I would love to see K-League kind of become a stepping stone for talent within all of Asia. Obviously, Korean talent is going to be here. But I think the league could position itself like MLS has to become more of a selling league and kind of become a hotbed for talent in that way. Uh, as far as a comparison of league to league, I think MLS would probably take K League, just because of they the... have like this pool of talent to draw on from yeah. Central to South mm-hmm. America, where you might not get into the upper tier leagues, right? Yeah. Whether in Europe or even in, in mm-hmm. some of the South American leagues, but uh, the base of talent, I suppose, and I, I guess that's why you're mentioning um, Southeast Asia being sort of a feeder, right? Right. Yeah, because th- there are limitations on how many foreign players you can have in a Korean team. It's the three plus one rule: three players from anywhere and one player from Asia, right. and. That limits things a little bit, but I think that there is talent here, and I think that some of the K-League teams have done really well scouting it, and I'd like to see that increase a little more to kind of follow in the footsteps of what MLS has done a little bit there. Before we get into your thoughts on the the upcoming season, um, just briefly, because you, you mentioned the K-League, and if you go by trophies, AFC Champions League, uh, K-League would be number one. Mm-hmm. The J-League, um, for a while, they were pouring a lot of money in, trying to draw in some mm-hmm. big, big names. Uh, you see China going crazy mm-hmm. in terms of uh, the money that they're splashing around for managers and players. Uh, a lot of the uh, league, uh, a lot of the leagues in the uh, Arab. Uh, region also Absolutely. doing the same. Is it always money that's the key to success, or do you think there's other things in play? Well, it doesn't hurt. Right. <laughs> you know, I think, and that's one of the other things comparing it to MLS, two leagues that came around about the same time. MLS has a little bit more capital now. They have a little bit more money to to go and get players in a six million, seven million dollar a year kind of range, and that's something that other Asian leagues are starting to do. And unfortunately, it's an area where K League's going to have to to catch up because I. Again, I'm a little bit biased, but I do think that if you put strictly 11 Korean K-League players against any other Asian nation of just players from that nation, I think they'll win that game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But again, I'm a little biased. Right. Um, so I think that the, the technical level is there, but there does need to be a little bit more capital investment right. if they're going to be able to keep up on the global stage. As we've seen in Champions League with J-League taking the last two titles, they're, they're starting to ascend yeah. quickly. Then when we talk about the the K League itself and uh, how it is trying to position itself not only as um, uh, Asia's preeminent league but mm-hmm. also here in 
in the country. You got the the V League. You've got uh, you've got uh, other professional sports, KBL. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the KBO. I I think we all agree would would be the supreme pro, pro, uh, professional league here yeah. as far as fan base and, mm-hmm. and and all of that. There does seem to be some soul searching going on, right, with the K League. Yeah, K League's in a very interesting place right now. I think there's a tendency to want to try to be baseball because baseball has been successful and who doesn't love going to a KBO game? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I don't. It's great. I yeah, love it. Right. But baseball, it, the beauty of baseball is that it allows for time in between innings, it allows for time in between pitchers, and it allows for that fan experience. And I think K-League for a long time, and, and still, is trying to emulate that in a lot of ways. And I think that that's something that, honestly, they could stand to cut out because football is a very different sport, and I think it needs to be more focused on fan culture and the supporter section, the ones behind the goals, yeah. going nuts, making the atmosphere. I don't want somebody on a megaphone right. saying right. charge or cheer or make noise. I don't want cheerleaders. I want a small stadium with the fans leading the way. And I think when you look at the most successful leagues in the world, that's what they have. The fans create that atmosphere. And right now, K-League's making some moves to help with that. Uh, Incheon United just got a new stadium a couple of years ago. Daegu FC is getting a new one this year that's smaller and more intimate. So hopefully, hopefully that will help yeah. a little bit. But it's it's got some ways to go. Upcoming season, uh, it's been sort of uh, Chunbuk's championship to lose, it feels like, for the past half decade at yeah. least. So it, it seems more open. What, what are you looking out for this season? Well, this year, it, I wish I could say it's not still theirs to lose, but it's still theirs okay. to lose. Okay. They're, they're the most talented team, and they lost uh, central defender Kim Min Jae. He's on the national team. He's over in China now. But other than that, that, that squad's almost the same. They have a new manager, Jose Moraes, who's not quite proven as a manager, so that makes them a little bit more of a wild card this year. I think Ulsan Hyundai is a team mm. that is going to challenge them. They were good last year. They've restocked really well this year. And, you know, last year, Gyeongnam FC got promoted from the second division and finished in second place, and no one saw that coming. Right. And they played sort such... Sort of a Leicester City type of story. Yeah. yeah. And they played such an entertaining brand of football. It was just attacking, attacking, attacking. So it, it's hard to say. I mean, if you, if you were asking me who's going to win, John Book but I okay. want somebody else to at least challenge, and I think there are teams that can. Well, fair enough. I mean, for people that want to get that uh, analysis uh, and, and some of the other content, uh, what's the best way to reach you, and then uh, where's the best way for people to kind of search for what you do online? Yeah, we're online at kleagueunited.com. We are on all social media, just at United, and we have a lot of Facebook Live shows, so if people want to interact with us directly, they can follow us on Facebook, ask questions, and kind of get in on the commentary on there. All right, Editor-in-Chief of K-League United, Brian Walters. Really, uh, thanks a lot for joining us and hope to have you back again soon. Thank you. Thank you.